Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to Seaside Allotment Channel. And it's a planting day again today, clearing lots of beds, planting lots of beds. And it's interesting really because it's a good illustration of the fact that I only kind of half plan my gardening. So I, because we're self-sufficient, I kind of always focus a lot of planning effort on making sure that we grow enough, that I sow enough seeds uh, so that we've got enough food to eat. But I don't plan where I'm going to put it. <laughs> and, and the reason I don't do that is because I, everything matures at different rates and pests wipe out crops and, you know, lettuce beds that should be cleared in June actually carry on with the fantastic lettuces into July. Um, or beetroot get, you know, some problem, some disease on the leaves, like I showed in the last video, and so they need to be cut back, which means that they don't, you know, they're stalled basically for about three weeks. Um, so there's always problems, the weather, of course. There's always problems, uh, and there's always kind of successes, fantastic periods of weather that bring things on faster than expected or whatever. Um, and so I don't find it very useful to have a firm plan in my head of which beds are going to have which things in them. Um, I just, you know, get a seed tray <laughs> and say, right, this is ready for planting. And which bed am I going to clear? Um, or which bed have I already got clear? And I just plant it. I do try to give some nod to uh, crop rotation, but we grow so many different things and so many different um, successions of those things in a year. I think we grow 250 different types of, of fruit and veg uh, on the three allotment plots that I do the planning for. Um, and, you know, we have at least three successions out of pretty much every bed. And so it's pretty much impossible to do a full, um, you know, comprehensive succession. But I always try and make sure that if I've grown spinach, I follow that with lettuce. And if I've grown brassicas, I follow that with lettuce. And if I've grown radish, I follow that with lettuce, <laughs> you know, so it's always uh, some sort of succession going on. Um, and, you know, that succession uh, is, uh, gives a nod to uh, crop rotation. Um, but, you know, I try to make sure the soil's really healthy, that the plants are really healthy, um, and I don't really have much of an issue with pests. Uh, the biggest issue I have with the leafy green beds probably is cutworms, um, and even that is kind of manageable. So anyway, let's go on and I'll show you what I've got to do today. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So I've just cleared the spinach bed and it's next to the carrot bed. So I always spray it with my homemade garlic spray while I've got this lid open. Although this is a netted frame, it's nowhere near good enough to keep the carrot fly out because obviously you're opening and closing it all the time to do stuff. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it's better than nothing. So now moving on to the lettuce bed. And the lettuce bed's also in one of these frames. And this actually serves a couple of purposes because um, you get a lot of problems with cutworms. And I think cutworms are the larvae of a moth. And so it keeps the uh, cutworms off. But also it just provides a bit of shade and lettuces need shade at this time of the year. In fact, it's really hard, uh, I find, to keep good quality lettuce continuity right through the middle of summer. And I always struggle, even, I keep trying to think, you know, of uh, how to do it better, but I never seem to get my timings right. I always seem to have loads of lettuce in June and then start running out in July and August, no matter what I seem to do. Here's my new lettuce beds that I just planted and they're coming on really quickly. I only planted them probably about a week ago and looking really nice. I just watered them and when I water them all I'm doing is I'm just watering with a tiny watering can just here um, and you can see the trail as I move from one to the other but um, yeah I'm watering deep so they're nice and moist in the root zone because I'm trying to encourage them to put deep roots down because what I found last year was lettuces planted in the summer they just had such shallow roots it was ridiculous um, so it was no wonder that they were struggling in the heat 
So this is what I end up with when I clear a bed like this. I always end up with loads of mare's tail. It's just impossible to get it all out of a mature bed without disturbing the plants too much. But uh, I don't dig it out because it's so deep rooted. Uh, it'll just come back again. And in fact, if you uh, if you break it off da down here under the soil like this, da deep down like that, um, you'll just get three or four plants coming up um, from the point at which you break it off. So uh, there's not a lot of point doing anything other than just pulling it out in my experience so far. And hopefully, after a few more years, I'll have weakened it, but uh, still pretty prolific in here. And in this bed, because it's going to be fairly densely planted, I've taken the roots out. Um, if I were just putting brassicas in here or something like that, then I'd lose, leave the lettuce roots in just to rot down. Um, but uh, I can't remember what I'm putting in here now, but say if it was carrots or something like that, I don't want all the lettuce roots in there. So I've twisted them out, and some of them had really good root systems because these were planted in March, I think, and so they put down really nice roots. Um, and these holes serve several purposes, really. The, uh, the compost that was attached to the roots and the roots are in the compost bin, uh, so they're going to speed up the uh, creation of good bacteria-rich and fungal-dominated well, not dominated, but fungal compost. The um, holes are good for watering, so I won't level this ground before I water because it's nice to get some water deep down and these holes provide an opportunity to do that. And of course, I'll meticulously weed it before I do anything. So the next thing I do is I just dusted the surface with a bit of seaweed meal and even less a bit of uh, composted chicken manure. Um, about a hand, handful of seaweed meal and about a handful of uh, chicken manure across the two halves of the bed. So everything's well watered now and so I'm just starting to put the mulch on and pretty much always I just use spent mushroom compost. I really like it. It's very rough at the moment. I'd break it up a little bit with my hands as I put it on. Um, yeah, and I've, although I said I wasn't going to plant brassicas in here, I've actually decided I am going to plant brassicas in here. So I think I'll have some kales in there probably, and some red cabbages in here. And uh, yeah, that'll work well because I uh, I don't need I don't need this bed again until I put lettuces in it again in April. Um, next year probably so yeah I'll get on with that so that is all mulched now although brassicas are going in here I haven't firmed this down and the reason is because in order to retain water you really want to keep this top surface as loose uh, as possible uh, so I kind of fluffed it up as I was putting it down uh, just to make sure that it wasn't compressed you want as much air in there really as, uh, as possible and obviously a, a dense layer uh, wouldn't serve that purpose we want it you know, a nice thick fluffy layer when I actually plant the brassica I will firm it down uh, just in its planting location but the whole bed itself I haven't firmed down so this is the next bed to clear and um, this one has currently got um, turnip greens in it and I've been using these turnip greens in smoothie mixes and they're pretty good. I'm quite pleased with them. So I think I'm actually going to harvest these turnip greens. Um, but yeah, the time has come. They're all going to seed. And uh, I want to plant some more chard in here. Um, and I've got masses of smoothie greens all over the plot. So I'm not really going to want for them. And being a brassica, they're starting to get... Uh, Caterpillars, well, eggs, that will soon be caterpillars. Right, so that's the charred bed done. I'm not going to plant them yet because I've got another charred bed to do. So this is the bed in question. And it's got some tomatoes at the back there, just two. Um, and the rest of it are actually spring onions. 
that I just left to grow on. So the variety that I used to stir on, uh, and they're also a bulbin onion, obviously at the right time of year. Uh, and I like to sow these um, as a spring onion in winter, because if you have too many spring onions, you can just leave them to grow on. Uh, and these were interplanted in the lettuce bed. Um, I harvested the lettuces. I just let them grow on, as I said, because I had plenty of spring onions. Um, and I got a nice little crop of bulbin onions. Just a nice little bonus, really. Mm, so there's those onions. Actually a really lovely little crop. Just from a bed that I basically just forgot. So, uh, yeah, really pleased with those. I'm just uh, leaving them in the polytunnel to dry. Because it's... Uh, it's lovely and warm in here, but it's really good air circulation because I've got both the doors open. And then just a few pickling onions as well. And that's one of the nice things about sowing in clumps, that uh, you just get like a huge yield from a tiny little area. Um, and, you know, all your rejects are still useful. Uh, so finally, it's planting time. And I've got some charred bright lights there, and some Mulatka beetroot. And as always, my plantain technique is the same. I just make holes with my trusty dibber, water the holes a little bit so it's nice and moist, and get planting. And with beetroot and chard and things like that, they like to be planted deep of the uh, charred bright lights and I really like this variety you get lovely uh, multicoloured stems and uh, you know, colours are good for you of course the more colours the better so I'm aiming for three plants in each plug and that's kind of the density that I put them in here um, and they're in a cold frame and the lid will go on in October, November time probably. Um, and that will provide enough protection and they should uh, continue growing and harvesting all the way through winter and uh, with lovely quality leaves. I find if they're outside, um, yeah, the, the, um, the leaf quality isn't really good enough uh, to eat uh, and they're very slow to replenish. And obviously we'll be picking these um, every week all the way through winter and quite a lot off these beds so uh, we need them to keep on growing uh, when i say plant them deep that's what i mean the uh, holes are a little bit deeper than the plant and they've just get pushed down to the bottom of the hole and so they sit in a slight depression that keeps them a little bit more upright than they would otherwise be and it means that when they get watered the water just goes in uh, and uh, accumulates in the root zone and there's the second bed and I've got another batch of chard on the way uh, and that'll go in this area here when those spring onions have been harvested right. so now I'm going to plant the beetroot and actually if we bring the tray up here these have got quite a bit of damage from the beet leaf miner so I'll be checking those leaves and squeezing them uh, just to make sure that if there's anything left in there, it's dead before it goes, before these get planted. I might take some of the leaves off, but some of the plants don't have very many leaves, so I'm not keen to uh, take every single leaf off that's damaged at this stage because they're probably still providing some useful energy to the plant. So there's the beetroot, and they're looking a bit sorry for themselves, aren't they? But they should uh, still pick up, no problem at all. And uh, we've actually got some rainy weather due, which will be amazing because we've hardly had any rain for the last few months. And so I chose this bed for the beetroot mainly because it's got the peas at the back of it. And they provide this bed with a little bit of shade and also we've got the uh, asparagus there as well providing a little bit of extra shade so um, because these plants don't look very healthy because you know they should have been planted 
um, a couple of weeks ago probably. Um, yeah, a little bit of shade should help them out. Got some beetroot at the side there to keep them company. I'm back where I started on the spinach bed. And I've got this little rad tag collection of leftover lettuces. And I don't normally like to do this, plant all different sorts of lettuce because they all mature at different times and you end up with a real messy bed. But because this bed's going to be uh, useful only for kind of August and maybe the first week in September or something before the main autumn lettuce beds on Jenny's plot take over, I don't really mind. Um, it's just trying to get as many lettuces in the ground at this point in time just to get me through August really. So I'm going to get these planted. And there we go, all planted up. So I'm just planting up this netted frame, six holes in each side and I've just been home and I've got six marathon and six red drum and red cabbage so I think I managed to squeeze those in there and by the time they're big enough I'll have harvested all those spring onions so uh, when I plant on here obviously these holes are too big for um, my dibbing stick thing so I just pull the, the soil that back and then really dig a hole just pull it back um, and obviously brassicas so I plant deep and firm it is on about I don't know, 10 days ago it amazes me how quickly they uh, the roots fill the pots so I'm really pleased with that and you know so when I plant them when I say deep I'm planting them down to the leaf junction here and in a bit of a depression so the mulch basically is um, about an inch higher than the plant but I've moved the mulch back um, and that provides a depression where the water collects so it makes watering the root zone really easy and there we go lovely and in the fullness of time that frame will come off go into the storage area while those grow on so there we go lots of stuff planted and as I said it's kind of a race against time at the moment for me because you know I'm clearing out little lettuce beds um, you know at quite a rate um, you know either because they're going to seed or they've got pests I've had quite a bad caterpillar uh, well a grub some sort of moth grub attack on them um, on some of the heart in lettuces um, I had a couple of um, Grenoble Reds that were hearting up, go mouldy. Uh, and so I'm kind of going through my, my reserve lettuces at quite a rate. And so I'm trying to get new lettuces in uh, as quickly as possible to keep everything going. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.